Georgia Prudential Center for a Friday night matchup against the team they started this five-game homestand against, the Toronto Maple Leafs. It's the Devils and the Leafs from Prudential Center. Opening face-off is straight ahead. It is a two-game night on the MSG Networks. The Knicks have the Nets on MSG or the MSG Go app. But we're glad you're with us for the Devils and the Maple Leafs right here on MSG+. Plus. Welcome to The Rock, as Lou Lamarillo likes to say, all he's concerned about is the win tonight. But if they get it, it means three wins in a row for the first time since the beginning of the season and three straight wins, a series sweep this regular season against the Leafs. As we go to Steve Cangelosi and Ken Danico. Thanks a lot, Deb. And their leading goal scorer from last season has come alive. The Devils never doubted that Adam Henrique was playing well, but a position change from center to left wing did coincide a bit with a 12-game goal drought. He kissed that goodbye Tuesday against the Senators. For Henrique, it was his 11th goal and his first since December 29th. He remains the team's scoring leader. Finding the back of the net, though, Kenny, that has to take great weight off his shoulders. Well, I think it really does. Adam's such a team player, and yes, it has coincided with him moving from center to left wing, but he does so many little things well. I thought he had one of his best games. His legs were moving. He was jumping in the play, reading play. Here you see pickpocket Carlson. He doesn't bite, stays home, has a breakaway. Yes, he doesn't score there, but you could tell he just was real focused. He was determined. And I've said it before, I'll say it again. Adam Henrique is as important as any player there is outside of Corey Schneider on this hockey team. And here's the goal drought. He breaks it right there with a beautiful snapshot upstairs on a nice pass from Zidlicki. So it's got to make him feel good. And I don't care who you are. I mean, the coaches can tell you, you're playing well. Don't worry, goals will come. It's hard on your confidence. Adam Henrique, I think, is ready to get on a streak and he does always seem to score clutch goals. That was a big one against Ottawa. When the Maple Leafs fired coach Randy Carlisle a month ago, they thought they were solving a problem. Instead, it was the equivalent of pouring gasoline on a fire. Still winless in 10 coming into tonight's game under the direction of Peter Horacek, the interim coach. They've won once in 12 tries. No victory since January 9th. The usually explosive Phil Kessel, three goals in his last 21. One. The record book shows Ken Danico's Devils once lost 10 <laughs> straight games in the fall of 1983. What's this like? Well, totally different scenario. Obviously, I was just elated. I was a 19-year-old kid loving playing in the National Hockey League, but I don't care. It's your job, you're a professional, and it weighs on you, especially in a place like Toronto where you are scrutinized more than any place in the National Hockey League with the media, the fans. They had high expectations this year. They were scoring goals by the bushel full of the first 30, 35 games. They've scored 10 goals their last 10 games. That is remarkable, and I know every player to a tee is starting to feel it. They're losing their confidence, squeezing the stick. It's been tough for the Toronto Maple Leafs. This is too good of a hockey claim club to be in this kind of streak. The explosive Mike Camilleri for New Jersey. The Devils shoot for a third straight win. He's had the game winner in each of the last two versus Florida Saturday, Ottawa Tuesday. The Leafs are up next at Prudential Center. With 31 games left to play, it's like the are the Devils down the home stretch? <laughs> well, they are, but uh, another another big game tonight. You know, a home stand here, they can put a bow on this home stand if they can get the win, nine out of ten points, and that's what they're concentrating in. And it's funny with 31 games left. Every game we're going to say another big game tonight, and here it is again. But those are the kind you want to watch. You, you kind of want, you know, want to watch them and you want to play in them. That's right. And coach them uh, as we go to our guys who are going to call it. You want to coach it, play in it, and call it, Steve. Playing's always the best way. <laughs> I'm happy where I am, Deb. Thank you. And Johnny. Uh, the question at the start of the season, could he handle a full-time workload? Corey Schneider had not even played 60 games since his days with the Manitoba Moose of the AHL five years ago. As he begins his NHL leading 45th start tonight, the answer would busier mean better? It appears to be yes. Meanwhile, James Reimer faced just four shots in his last game. That was in relief of Jonathan Bernier. He gets the start tonight. The Leafs, as we mentioned at the top, a team really just looking to find a way to get back in the win column. He's lost his last seven. Uh, the Leafs, a wounded animal is always dangerous. I expect this to be an exciting, intense hockey game. The Leafs look to 
get back in the win column. It has been one tough stretch for the Leafs. Mike Santarelli quickly picks up the loose puck for Toronto, and they work it across to Joffrey Lupel, who puts the brakes on and is covered by Marek Sidlitsky. That will start out with Scott Gomez, Steve Bernier, and Adam Henrique, who's on the puck here for New Jersey. John Merrill's pass, intercepted, taken away. Daniel Winnick's shot, and that warms up Corey Schneider pretty quickly. He has been in some kind of zone, hasn't he, Steve? That was a relatively easy save for him to make, but you just see Corey Schneider at the top of that crease, and you can just feel he really is confident right now. James Van Riemsdyk, the Middletown, New Jersey native, able to drop this back. Jake Gardner plays it across. There's Morgan Riley playing it off the backboard and fired away wide. Taken by the Leafs again. Good pressure early on as Santarelli takes behind goal. Puck jarred loose. Centering try by the Leafs. Taken by Merrill. Henrique tries to settle it down, but it's punched back in deep by James Van Riemsdyk. Tonight's lineups brought to you by Infinity. Luxury cars that deliver inspired performance. Another centering try taken by Tyler Bozak. Jake Gardner on the puck here. This is a terrific start for Toronto as it's funneled in. And Gomez in the corner. Pass intercepted. Van Riemsdyk tried to come out in front, but swept away. Here's Riley again to the corner. Van Riemsdyk centering try. That's stopped by Schneider. And Gomez will send this the length of the ice. Uh, it's something you kind of expect, or certainly I did, at least coming out the way they have here and putting some pressure on the Devils. And Devils standing still a little bit. They're going to have to get their legs moving. And when I mentioned Corey Schneider, Schneider Steven, really feeling it in the zone, well, I feel it up here. I can't imagine what the players think that, hey, we can make a mistake, and we understand Corey Schneider's there to help us out. And that relieves a lot of pressure for defensemen as well. 20 years, that was the feeling, with number 30 <laughs> playing in that crease. Peck taken here by New Jersey, and Zajac sees it goes by his skate and funneled back to Stefan Robidon. We often leave that part of the story alone as the season progresses, but it is such a big part of the makeup of this job. Immense shoes to fill. He's filled them splendidly in the weeks leading up to tonight. Here's Hadlat working it ahead. Picked up here by Andy Green. And into the leaf zone where Elias reaches out for it. It's chopped by Roman Polak back out to center. Peter Holland on the move here for Toronto. Shovels one in front for the cutting Leo Kovarov. And that just missed. Of course, I wasn't sure where that puck was. And again, the Leafs going hard to the net. And I expect a lot of desperation all over the ice from this hockey club. Devils are going to have to pick their game up. It's early now, only three minutes in, but they got to pick it up a little bit, standing still. There's co-coach Lou Lamorello. Whoa, and won since January 19th. And, and there's a different feeling in the dressing room around the guys. No, they're not scoring a whole lot of goals, Steve. And in fact, on nights, we're not seeming to get a whole lot of chances. But they're efficient. They're playing much better defensively. They're getting great goaltending that we talked about. And you feel up here that they're going to win these two one one nothing games. Where's the first two months of the season? I know talking to you as well, it just felt you were waiting for the other shoot to drop, and I'm sure that's the way they felt in the locker room. Here's Mike Camilleri, beautiful move around France, and plays it across, and Yager just missed on the shot. Yaramir Yager denied and continues on for New Jersey. First three shots of the game for Toronto. The best scoring chance, though, right there by the Devils. Not an easy job for James Reimer, and he made a spectacular save on Yermer Yager on a great move by Mike Camilleri in the pass. Adam Larson trying to find the handle instead. Winnick able to play this back in deep. Taken here by Santorelli. Dropped back to the point where Riley is able to keep it alive and played across here for Roman Polak. The Czech defenseman has it taken away, and the Devils in transition here with Dinah Zubris able to punch it in. The Gomez line steps back on for New Jersey, and Riley is on the puck here. 20-year-old defenseman Morgan Riley motoring into the zone. Tries to work it across. It deflects behind the net, and here's Phil Kessel reversing course. Sidlitsky winds it around the boards, and Bernier on the puck here will shovel it out to center. The conclusion of a five-game homestand and the season series, two against the Leafs. Devils' first shot of the game is a beauty. Mike Camilleri with the fake slapper walks around Cody Franz and feeds Yarmar Yager, who looks like he's going to have a wide-open net, but James Reimer gets across and makes a huge glove save right here, Steve, and that's his first shot of the game. Not easy to face that kind of scoring opportunity early on. 
Reimer gets the job done here. Off the draw, this is taken by Kessel and played across. The longtime Dallas star, Robida, plays it back in deep, seeking his first goal as a member of the Maple Leafs as this goes back into the Toronto zone. Henrique with the takeaway for Bernier, a shot saved by Reimer, and the rebound try goes wide. James Reimer, another big stop, deflects off the skate of Henrique, and Bozak plays it off the backboard. Back into the Devils' zone where Merrill will give chase. Two shots on goal for the Devils, two glorious scoring opportunities. And if not for James Reimer, easily could have had both of those in the back of the net. Cuomo Rutu steps on for the first time with Jacob Josephson and Jordan Tutu. Devils line up identical to what it was here Tuesday night. The power move by David Booth. He's met at the side of the net. The Leafs continue on. Nazem Kadri. Able to work the puck free and taken here by Richard Ponick. Back to Kadri, given here to Jake Gardner. More pressure by the Leafs now. His shot through traffic didn't get through, and it's taken here by Josephson. Punched ahead to Jordan Tutu, who sends it in deep. Motoring past Gardner, he's checked in the corner. Devils in their last game extended their best run of the season with Tuesday's 2-1 win versus the Senators. Booth able to motor in. Tries the power move on Schneider. The net is knocked off the mooring for another stoppage in play. And David Booth, no regard for his body or the Devils defenseman as well as Schneider goes hard to the net. Here's the scoring opportunity. Adam Henrique strips the puck from the Leaf defenseman right here and feeds Steve Bernier with the shot partially blocked by Robida. James Reimer I think gets a piece of it as well. And here's David Booth going hard. Peter Harrell loses his glove stick, loses a little bit of everything. And Corey Schneider was fortunate he was not injured there and expect the Leafs with only 10 goals their last 10 games to drive hard to the net just like Booth did there. Camilleri will take the draw just outside the devil's zone against Holland and it comes back here to Riley. Polak will fire into the devil's end. Nearly six minutes in. Played across, and Green sees the return pass from Zubris, taken away by Toronto. Riley under pressure from Camilleri, who lifts it ahead. Taken here by the Devils, and Camilleri able to pick up Yaramir Yager, who's over the line. Here's Yager, knocked down on the play, still able to get a pass away, but it's taken away by the Leafs, and the ex-Devil, David Clarkson, will send it back in. Andy Green to take the loose puck, and Zubris works it across and picks up Marek Zidlitsky. He's over the Toronto line and dumps in. German-born defenseman Corbinian holds her there to deal with him. The puck jarred loose. Zidlitsky turns and shoots, and it went wide of goal. Merrill trying to hold the zone at the opposite point. Tied up by Daniel Winnick. Now gets some help from Yager as well. Devils keep it alive. Gomez has it. Centering try. Shot by Larson is saved by Reimer, who holds on. We're scoreless. First period at Prudential Center. The Devils with another real good scoring opportunity. Only their third shot in the game, but all three have been great scoring chances. Stop right there, fellas. Watch Adam Larson. No hesitation. He's confident. Wants to go hard to the net. Scotty Gomez threw two leaf sticks. Finds him in the opening, and James Reimer comes across and is all over that and on top of that puck, but a good opportunity for Adam Larson, and love to see him jumping in the offensive play. We see how sound he's been in his own defensive end. And what a terrific pass. What vision by Scott Gomez there. Looking to tack on to his assist total with Scott Gomez, picked up here by Bernier. Gomez, quite a story this season. Hung in there with the Devils. Got his chance to play and since has been a fixture in the Devils lineup. This is game 28 for him. He's helped on 14 goals this season. Bernier now streaking down the right side. Able to drop this for Adam Henrique. Puck jarred loose in the corner. Taken here by Henrique. And here's Gomez under pressure. Work back to the point. But Zidlitsky had began cutting towards goal. And all the way back it's played by Corey Schneider. Well, we know Zedlitsky will certainly activate in the offensive zone, but a little miscommunication there. And Adam Henrique passes that puck out of the zone and didn't know exactly where 
Merrick was going on that particular occasion. Here's Martin Havlat, chased back in his own end, gets it away from the on-rushing Phil Kessel. Havlat, Zajac, Eliash. Line that's been intact for roughly a month as it's punched back in deep. Coming in front with it is Havlat. Couldn't get a clean shot away, and Gardner takes the puck behind the Leafs net. Nearly taken away by Zajac. Under pressure, Eliash keeps it alive for the Devils, and now Zajac. Hit by Cody Franzen, funneled back in deep, and Eliash has it in the corner. Tied up by Tyler Bozak. Jarred loose, Zajac's got it. Tried to play it back to the point. Kessel with the intercept, and now Andy Green back to defend him. Here's Van Riemsdyk, who has it for Toronto. He was the Leafs' goal scorer in the last meeting between the teams here nine days ago. Punched across to the stick of Tuomo Rutu and steered in by Hadlock. Steve, I want to go back to Adam Larson's chance. And a month ago, six weeks ago, he would not have jumped into that hole there and see that Scotty Gomez had an opportunity to hit him because of his confidence was down. He just wanted to make the safe play. Well, that's how much he's grown in the last three weeks here. Shot is saved by Corey Schneider. Rebound sat in the crease briefly and a little bit after. The whistle. But order is restored. Well, there's an adage that adversity makes you stronger. Ladies and gentlemen, meet Hercules. Legal name, Peter Horacek. The Leafs are in a 3-17-1 spiral since December 18th. The 10-game winless streak under his watch, they've scored just 10 goals. And the strange dynamic under Randy Carlisle. This was the highest scoring team in the National Hockey League. And the reason Randy Carlisle was fired because they were in a tailspin at the time, but nobody envisioned making the coaching change. And what would ensue in 0901, their last 10, and you talked about the troubles Horacek has had finding guys that can score goals right now. Loose in front, that centering try by 2-2. Guided back to the point where it's taken by Fraser. His shot is fired wide. Played off the backboard. They score! 12 over two. It deflected off Reimer, and the Devils take the early lead. Well, Tuomo Ruto, Johnny on the spot. As the shot was taken from the back end off the end boards. Right to Ruto, and he had no hesitation. He really was alert here. Watch Mark Fraser off the end boards and see Ruto on his backhand from a pretty sharp angle. Is able to bank this off the left skate of James Reimer coming across. See there, he slipped a little bit. Didn't quite get across quick enough, and Rutu was alert enough from a sharp angle. Just get that puck toward the net, and it ricochets off Reimer's left skate. Gives the Devils a 1-0 lead. For Tuomo Rutu, his sixth of the season. Fraser with the assist at 9.32. Picked up here by Camilleri. Poked it away from Peter Holland and taken here. You're playing a team that's struggling, one that hasn't won in nearly a month, a team that's had difficulty scoring. You always want to score first. That's 100%. How big is it in a situation like this? Well, it's huge and demoralizing for the Toronto Maple Leafs. I don't care what they say. They came out the way they wanted, and again, they don't get a goal. They don't get in the board. And when you're 0-9-1, your last 10, you were just going what is going on here we're behind again you start to feel the pressure squeeze the stick so does not get any easier for the Leafs not giving up the first goal offside is the call here we'll step aside at the rock it is now time for the Coors Light Coors Banquet timeless moment and we go back to October 16 1989 and the Coors time timeless moment was Devil's Trade Tom Curvers to this Toronto Maple Leaf team for a 1991 first round draft pick and that ended up being the Hall of Famer three time Stanley Cup champion and one of the greatest players skaters I've ever seen Scott Niedemeyer and a big reason why we were able to compete year in year out was the great skating of a Scott Niedemeyer that's your timeless Coors moment centering try in front for Bernier and that just missed off the stick of Adam Henrique Poor Tom Curvers, by the way. He gets reminded about that more often than you would think. Pulling the trigger, Henrique is stopped by Reimer, and it's taken here by Stefan Robidon. Well, Tom Curvers played some real good hockey here. Great gifted offensive defenseman. Had over 50 points one year. 
And who would have envisioned Scott Needham would have turned out to be the player he was, but I know myself and the rest of the organization we're certainly happy to get Scott Niedermeyer third overall, and the rest is history, as they would say. He was one of the best I've ever seen at the back end. Hoping he can be part of that alumni weekend coming up in March. You know Scott's making every effort to be part of it. We'll see if that comes to light. Devils with the lead here, trying to crash in front was Tyler Bozak, picked up here by Morgan Riley. Zidlitsky. Tries to funnel one across, intercepted here by the Leafs, and Van Riemsdyk on the puck. Centering try for Kessel, he didn't have much space to shoot, and the Devils take it away. Eliash across and controlled by the skate of Travis Zajac. Second assist on the Route 2 goal goes to Jacob Josephson. Devils with the lead, Van Riemsdyk looking to answer back. Goes around the ex-Maple Leaf, Mark Fraser guides it back to Riley at the point, who fires it wide. Taken here by Zajac and looks to lift it ahead. January of 2015, the second worst month in the history of the Maple Leafs organization. They went 1-11-1, their worst in 27 years. February is off to the losing start, too. To follow that up, watching the Leafs here, you try to do a little too much. Talk about squeezing the sticks. You pass when you should shoot, shoot when you should pass, and hang on to the puck a little long. Things really start to unravel. 2-2 drops this for Josephson, and he shoots the puck high and wide. Jordan 2-2 on the puck, able to get it away from Nazem Kadri. He's hit by 2-2. Taken away by Josephson, bumps with his own teammate, and now it gets physical as Big Richard Ponick joins the fray, too. They saw Cody Franzen come to the aid of his teammate and bowl over Route 2, but that doesn't the Turk to Womo, as he loves to finish his man made a big hit on Kadri. Leo Komarov over the line. The Russian works it across. Pass for Clarkson. Taken away. And back come the Devils in transition. Here's Yaramir Yager. Tied up by a couple of Leafs but frees up the puck. Now Polak trying to control. Tries to wind it around the boards. Instead reversing course with the puck. Zubris. Guided back to the point by Camilleri. Green shovels it across and picks up Mike Camilleri. Good pressure by this unit as Yager now controls. Camilleri had one teed up, bothered by Komarov, and the puck squirts away, and the Leafs, with Clarkson one-handing it towards the Devils end, dodge the bullet there. Zubris at center, lays it across, and here's Mike Camilleri. What a week he's had. Game-winning goals in consecutive games for New Jersey tied for the league lead in that department with seven on the year. Here's Peter Holland putting the brakes on for the Leafs. Tries to play it back in deep. Zidlitsky instead funnels across and it's taken by John Merrill. Gomez left his skates in order to control and Corbinian Holzer has this. Holzer quick on his feet, light in the wallet though. He was stuck with the bill at the annual rookie dinner that came at a Nashville steakhouse at a pretty pretty big price. I know the veterans love that day, don't they? <laughs> we certainly do, but from a leave standpoint and the slump that they're in, and they played a pretty good game in Nashville, it's about bonding and trying to get out of this together. Pass across, taken here by Santarelli. They scored three goals and had the lead in that game against the best in the West and could not finish. A regulation loss they come off against the Predators. 4-3 was the final. Here's Santarelli trying to motor in. Devils meet him well and taken here by Eliash. His pass intercepted. Santarelli able to gobble this up. Looks for space to shoot. Peter Harold came back in time to help. Well, Santarelli picked up the turnover in the neutral zone and was one on two, but both defense and flat footers were able to recover. Merrill and Harold. Peter Harold in the corner. Sees Van Riemsdyk guide this back to the point. Franzen able to send it around the boards and Phil Kessel now. Works it across and Gardner plays it. Tyler Bozak. Here's Bozak circling through it across looking for James Van Riemsdyk and that connection just missed. Devils continue to do an outstanding job around their net near Corey Schneider in the house area and giving no open lanes for Bang Bang quick plays. That's what Leafs were trying around there, and that has to frustrate teams as well. Just no, no room to move in the offensive zone. 2-2 two -two drops it back. Josephson shot, saved by Reimer. Scramble in front at the doorstep is Rutu. Oh, and a stick came up high and might have hit Phil Kessel, who is down on the ice. 
Well, that was a little bit of a strange sequence. Reimer gave the puck back, and that's when the all heck broke, broke loose in front. Mark Fraser getting physical in the corner on David Booth there. Nice little battle along the wall, one and one battle. You love to see that from both players. And then Root to shoulder down, elbow down. Big hit on Kadri. Oh, Cody Fronson comes to his teammates aid there, although it was a very clean hit. And then Root to 2-2 two -two with a nice little pass to Joseph with a quick shot. And James Reimer in his crease. Puck goes down. You see Phil Kessel off to the side. Gets a whack in the mouth from his own defenseman, Roman Polak. And that had to sting. He had something on that. Hopefully, for the least sake, Kessel's okay. But what I was talking about before the break, James Reimer covered the puck up with his glove. I guess he had already heard the whistle, then just threw it out, and players continued to play, I think. And that kind of snowballed, started Domino's effect, and that's why Kessel eventually got the stick in the mouth. You want to avoid the defensive zone faceoff. There is something to be said for stopping play on occasion. It's taken here by Booth. Met at center ice by 2-2. Jacob Josephson back for the Devils. Able to drop this for Rutu. Redirection by Josephson and juggling and holding on is James Reimer with the save. Let's go downstairs. Deb Placey is ice side. Hi, Deb. Hi, guys. We are standing by with the GMC intermission report. Johnny Mack is with us, John McClain. We'll get his thoughts on this first period, and we will have an interview right outside the Devils dressing room. It's all coming up on the GMC intermission report, guys. Deb, thanks. Shots are even, seven apiece. The score is not. Camilleri to take the draw. On Christmas Day, Toronto sat in sixth place in the Eastern Conference. Tonight, they own the sixth worst record in the NHL. It's been a sharp drop and one that has sent them spiraling as Clarkson sends this ahead. He's met by Zidlitsky. Taken here by John Merrill for New Jersey. And they see former New Jersey Devil David Clarkson playing on a fourth line now, Steve. And his frustrations continue since he signed with the Leafs last offseason as a free agent. Ten goals doubles his total from last year, but that's only part of the story as it's lifted ahead here. Komarov works it ahead. Here's Clarkson for Toronto. Able to shoot, he rang one off the pipe. On cue, David Clarkson nearly silenced us, and it's taken here by Peter Holland. That shot blocked away in front and collected by John Merrill instead. How often did we see that in New Jersey? That was a great little couple of stick moves and the quick wrist shot from David Clarkson and he came oh so close to tying this hockey game right off the crossbar. Polak able to work this across. That pass deflects off Joffrey Lupul's stick. Now he shoots. Save made by Schneider. Rebound gobbled up by Adam Henrique who darts back the other way for New Jersey. Met by Polak and guided back here to the stick of Morgan Riley. Here's Riley. Maneuvering away and taken here. Santarelli's shot is blocked away. Follow-up try by Lupul and it went wide. Well, this has been Toronto's best line. Lupul, Santarelli, and Winnick. Deb and John spoke about it a little bit on Visa Devils game night, but it has been their most trusted unit now for some time. And it's been that top line of Bozak, Van Riemsdyk, and Kessel that's been the threesome that's really come under fire lately. Yeah, they've really struggled now that they're playing a little more structured game. Doesn't seem to suit those guys. They like to exchange chances, not getting as many offensive opportunities. And Santorelli using his speed. He can fly, and rumors that he may be on the trade block, and a lot of teams would like him. Holzer now run into the boards by Fraser. Boy, you think he's part of the answer, not the problem. We'll see what they do moving forward. Taken here in the corner by Tyler Bozak, who gives here to James Van Riemsdyk. Maybe the wrong way to preface it. He's probably got a lot of trade value. That's why you hear his name so often. Punched away. All of that will be decided before the 2nd of March. So we're roughly a month away. Taken here by Kadri. Off the bench. He shoots, and that's fought off by Corey Schneider, who stopped all 10 the Maple Leafs have fired at him to this point. 2-2. Well, it backhands one in. Minute to go in the opening period. Gardner, big hit from Tuomo Rutu. At 
productive first period for number 15 in red. And this goes all the way back. And that was right after after Jordan Tutu with a big hit like a battering ram in the Leafs end. You got to keep your head up with these two guys out on the ice. They finish their checks. They play till the whistle. Play hard. And you got to see, still see that physicality. Those two guys have brought it in the first period. Here's Kadri over the line. Tries to shake loose of Zidlitsky. Drops it back to Riley. Played across. Polak with a shot. And that's blocked away by John Merrill. Yager trying to work it out of the zone. And now does with Polak all over it. Here's Ponick taking the loose puck. Trying to get a last gasp chance in the first period here for Toronto. The Devils meet them effectively, and now Cavallari with seven seconds to go. With that, the first period comes to an end. Tuomo Rutu's goal has the Devils on top. one nothing after one, the GMC first in a mission report. Deb and John McClain straight ahead. The New Jersey Devils intermission report is presented by GMC. Visit the pros at your nearest GMC dealer and test drive an eight-passenger 2015 Acadia. GMC, we are professional grade. Skate down to Prudential Center after class for the Devils 2014-15 College Nights. Upcoming games include February 9th versus the Edmonton Oilers. Tickets are available with a valid student ID at a special price. To purchase tickets, visit NewJerseyDevils.com slash college or call 1-800-NJ-DEVIL. First in a mission here at Prudential Center. Welcome back with Ken Danico. I'm Steve Cangelosi. There are two schools of thought about how teams in the situations that the Devils and the Maple Leafs right now will follow. Uh, Lou Lamorello said simply today, 24 hours at a time. I'm not looking past the game tonight and this weekend. For the Maple Leafs, uh, the conventional belief in Toronto is that a fire sale is set to begin. The Leafs have made a trade tonight, albeit not involving a player who's playing in tonight's game. They've dealt Carter Ashton and David Brohl to Tampa Bay for a conditional draft pick in 2016. And many, Dano, feel this is just the tip of the iceberg. Even a player like Phil Kessel has been mentioned in trade rumors, but moving a player that expensive and with that kind of cap hit in this day and age, it's not a... It's not impossible. It is extremely difficult. No, it just looks like the Leafs want to change the chemistry here completely. And with the turnaround, the way they started, and to think since the firing of Randy Carlisle before he was fired, the tailspin they went. And this is a team that scored the most goals in the league at the time, or at one point, a team that everybody expected has a real good opportunity to make the playoffs with the record they had the first 30, 35 games. But it has been dismal since, and I, for one, in my opinion, don't think you trade guys for the sake of trading them, but they do want to change the chemistry, change the look of this Toronto Maple Leaf teams, because it can't continue there. We know how important the fans, the game is to these fans and the Toronto Maple Leafs are, and they just want to see the Leafs do something. And certainly Brendan Shannon, first year as president, uh, wants to make a little noise, I would think, as well at the trade deadline. The NHL is not calling this a 10-game losing streak for the Maple Leafs because one of those losses came in a shootout. They define it as a 10-game winless streak. 1966-67 was the last time Toronto actually lost 10 straight. It led to coach Punch Imlach being hospitalized due to stress. Francis Michael King Clancy would go behind the bench, get the Leafs on track. Imlach returned. The Leafs upset Stan Mikita's Blackhawks in the opening round, and they wound up winning the Stanley Cup. They're looking into their crystal ball in Ontario these days, and nobody's expecting an encore of that story, are they? <laughs> I don't think so at this point. But what's interesting, I mean, there's no way this team should be in the doldrums the way they are. You look at some of their talent players, and I just look at the trade value of a lot of these guys. A lot of people will be interested in so many of these players. Shows me they have a nice collection, just not the right chemistry right now. Second period underway, and the Devils leading by one. Neither team had a power play opportunity in the first as Adam Henrique loves this down. Works it ahead just by the outstretched stick of Steve Bernier, who in a second chance sends it into the Leafs end. Shots on goal, 10-7 for Toronto. The Devils on top. Here's Gomez. Tried to play it back to the point and intercepted here by the Leafs. Got by Cody Franzen and taken here by Larson. 
Shoveled ahead. Zajac at center will glove it down. Devils now complete the change as Havlat steps on with Patrick Eliash. It is a seven-game goal drought for Eliash coming into tonight. Here's Patrick Eliash shooting, and he ran it off the post. Patrick Eliash ever so close to finally getting the 400. But he rips one off the post on a terrible giveaway by defenseman Cody Franzen for the Toronto Maple Leafs. Picked up here by the Leafs and Riley to the stick of Joffrey Lufel. He missed the last meeting between these teams due to injury. Taken here by the Devils and worked across to John Merrill. Punched ahead. Batted down by Zajac. Great job to control the puck. Puts the brakes on. Picks up Elias. Scores! Patrick Elias! And there's the milestone. 400! Just like that, the same shift where Patrick Elias dung one off the post. Gets another opportunity. And off the rush, Travis Sajak down the left side. Feeds a wide open Patrick Elias. And congratulations to him for his 400th goal. There you see Travis Sajak stops up. And Patrick Elias wide open. You see three, four Leafs all go to Travis Sajak. Just bad D-zone coverage. He's wide open. He snaps it far side past James Reimer. And that has to be a relief to Patrick Elias. Although it gives them a 2-0 lead, which is the most important for the New Jersey Devils. Centering try by Kadri. Back to the point. Polak's stick failed him. Corey Schneider reaches out and covers up. More goals, more assists, more points than any player in Devils history. Now let's go back to the goal. And Travis Sajak, who's played very well lately, not getting a lot of points, but makes a great offensive play here as we know how well he's played in his own end during this stretch at home for the Devils finds Patrick Elias coming late head up all the way snaps the wrist shot far side pass Reimer to give the Devils a two night lead and again congratulations to Patrick Elias the all time leading point getter for the Devils goals assists and now scores his 400th of his illustrious career here in New Jersey so he's knocked down the milestones that were in front of him the 600 assist milestone, the 1,000 point total. Here's 2-2. Two -two. Hounded by Holzer, takes a hit from behind. Jordan 2-2 two -two stays on his skates. Tries to center this for Rutu and take it away. Here's Booth working it across. Kadri with a shot, save made by Schneider who covers up. Now you see right there, you see Kadri bang his stick against the glass and that's what I was talking about when you're in a slump as a team and the tough times are going through he didn't collect that pass cleanly he gets it off quick see that squeezing the stick that's feeling the pressure a little bit and Kadri was not happy with himself this is such a gifted young talented player but that's what goes on amongst the team when things aren't going your way and they just have to relax and start to play there you see Kadri he usually picks that puck up and in one motion gets a shot off Patrick Eliash's 400th came at the 123 mark of the second period Zajac and Merrill get the assists on that here's Gardner's shot that's blocked away Adam Larson and Yager takes and gives to Mike Camilleri Devils leading goal scorer funnels this ahead and now Yager centering try trying to put it on the forehand was kind of Zubris, but he got tied up Not a good chance from the Devils here's Clarkson taken away by New Jersey and Zubris tries to punch it across for Yager he's met at his own blue line by Cody Franzen looking at unrestricted free agency and another player whose name comes up if you just listen long enough north of the border and just watching from here you sense some of the least frustrations even getting real sloppy and careless in their own end turning pucks over we didn't see that eight ten days ago when they were here previous where well, they played a very sound defensive game and lost in the shootout now they're starting to turn pucks over play down low Komarov tries to center one Adam Larson keeping an eye on Winnick checks him puck jarred loose well played by Larson, and now Zubris tries to get it out of the zone. Tied up by Polak and played back for Larson. Eliash is not the first to get number 400 in the NHL in a Devils uniform. Ilya Kovalchuk did that, but the goals primarily came elsewhere. 
in Atlanta. Taken here by Zaglitsky. Save made off the blocker. Reimer juggled into the glove, and he holds on. History, finally 400. John McClain, our man, 347, second all-time. Bobby Holik, Zach Parise, Kirk Muller round out the top five. They have all done this to a degree, playing for a team that stresses defense first, and that's what makes it impressive. Uh, Patrick Bally Ash, we know, playing his entire career here and an awful lot of hockey games in years, and he's been able to produce consistently throughout his career. But, yeah, Steve, no question, at times, making sacrifices is not about just putting up numbers. It's about winning, and any, any player will tell you that's what they want to do is win. No matter what con contribution I have to make for the hockey team. And the flex here to Tyler Bozak. He can't control. And Patrick has become a great two-way player throughout his career. Here's Zajac motoring back the other way for the Devils. Eliash able to track this down behind goal. Centering try deflected off Zajac's stick. And it's collected by Kessel. Zajac intercepts and sends it right back in. Eliash. 2-2. Met at center ice, and it comes back here to the ex-Maple Leaf, Mark Fraser. 2-0 Devils, less than five minutes into period two. Momo Rutu winds this around the boards, and now Josephson will give chase. Their placey alerted you to the scoring change on the Devils' first goal. They took the assist away from Josephson, gave it to Jordan 2-2. And Fraser fires back in. New Jersey trying to complete a homestand by making it nine points out of a possible ten. 2-2 with the puck for New Jersey. This puck deflects out of play for a stoppage. And with that, gives us a chance to get to our good friends at Cadillac. And the trivia question, Mike Camilleri is tied for the NHL lead with seven game-winning goals this season. Who led the NHL in that category last season? Uh, I'm going to make a guess eventually when we get back to it, but I should know that. That's recent. But I didn't. I think gotta, it, I'm I, thinking of one in particular, but I'm not sure. Me too. I'm wondering if he held on. I know he had the lead at some point last season. Picked up here by Clarkson at center. All the stats sometimes just melt together, don't they? It's Yager who plays it across. Merrill back to Yaramir Yager. Quick shot deflected off Gardner's stick and winds around here. John Merrill back to Yager. Crosses up with Clarkson and the Leafs able to get this out of the zone. Peter Holland darting back the other way will dump in. Well, behind the play, Komarov and Merrick Zidlitsky are battling each other, having words and a few swipes at each other behind the play. And we continue on. Komarov now back after a collision with Zubris. Here's Gardner with a chance, and that puck deflects into the corner. Big hit by John Merrill on Richard Ponick. Back to the point. Robida works it across. Taken here by the Leafs. Glove saved by Schneider through traffic. He stops David Booth and will step aside in a 2-0 Devils lead. Hey, what a great goal by Patrick Eliash. There's 400. Perfect shot. Right place. Congratulations to him. I tell you, the Devils here, it's a 2-0 lead they have, but this Toronto team's so disinterested, they better try and take advantage of it and make it three or four because they just have enough skill that maybe, you know, they get one in there and then it's, it's a 2-1 hockey game and things change. They, they try not to give them any life here if they can. That's what they got to do for the rest of the game. John, thanks. Boy, you wonder where that scoring punch has been, Kenny, and how long it's going to stay dormant for this team. We would think eventually they're due to score a bushel full of goals, but it's it's really remarkable, Steve. I mean, I mean, this team could score at will first six weeks, two months of the year, and now they just cannot buy a goal, and that's just the way it has gone for this Toronto Maple Leaf Hockey Club, but far too skilled and talented for it to continue all the rest of the season. Van Riemsdijk shot sticked aside by Corey Schneider. Kadri trying to gain control of the puck, and it's worked back towards the Toronto end where Robida will give chase. 2-0 Devils if you're just joining us. Tuomo Rutu with the first goal. Eliash, 400th of his career. Speaking of one of those gifted offensive players, Jersey native James Van Riemsdijk, we saw him 
The last time he was in town, score a beautiful goal, the only goal of the game for the Toronto Maple Leafs. And in the last 14 games, only four goals, four helpers. Uh, not, not real good, but it's indicative of what the Leafs have done offensively. And he's a guy they're going to count on heavily to score some goals. And we know he was a prolific high school player here at CBA in New Jersey, in Middle, Middletown, New Jersey. And James Van Riemsdyk is is a hero amongst these parts probably has a lot of family and friends and it's got to be difficult for him right now and the rest of his teammates what's going on in toronto think of jersey pride about the garden state producing a second overall pick in the nhl draft which is what van reamsdyke was and that's one that worked out for toronto we talk a lot about things that have gone south one for one trade with luke shen they got the better of that. It's taken here by Camilleri. Centering try. Pretty good deal for the Devils there with Camilleri. Yager trying to find the handle. And the puck taken away by the Leafs. Keeping it in. Harold plays it behind the net. Camilleri continuing on. Plays it back for Peter Harold at the point. Wrist shot goes wide. Off the backboard and collected here by Riley. Leafs work it across, and here's Joffrey Lupel trying to get Toronto back in this. Only down two as it's fluttered ahead and knocked down out of midair by Santarelli with a high stick, and that stops play. I got some frustration behind the net. Lupel and Mark Fraser jawing at each other. Santarelli comes in, gives Fraser a big bear hug. I mentioned Toronto's big three since the Randy Carlisle firing. Van Riemsdyk, Bozak, Kessel. 13 points between them in a dozen games. They're a combined minus 27 in that stretch. They're a combined minus 44 for the season coming into this evening. Well, that's pretty alarming. I mean, I mean, we know they've had struggles, and even premier offensive players like Kessel, like Van Riemsdyk, are going to have stretches like that. However, the minus 27 as well and if you're not providing offense yes you're going to be on for some goals against but it's just been been a real tough stretch and at times these two guys together along with Bozek were unstoppable I'm surprised they haven't switched lines a little bit more now we see David Booth on the left side with Bozak and Kessel punch back in by Havlat at practice the lines are pretty much defined by color-coded jerseys yesterday at practice this line did not have the top line color and Peter Horacek says he's no longer viewing it that way the guys who play the best are just going to play the most no such thing as a first second or third line anymore Eliash plays it across now gets it back from Havlat Zidlitsky the trailer played down low oh what a setup for Havlat and he's denied by Reimer how did that puck not get by James Reimer what a three-way passing tic-tac-toe play Booth shot saved by Schneider well Schneider with the big save off Booth Coming right back the other way, but that was a remarkable three-way passing play. Looked like Havlet was going to have the whole left side of the net. Reimer got a pat on it somehow. Holzer works it across. That shot kicked out by Schneider. Oh, he's got the rebound, too. Corey Schneider is as sharp as he has been in this wonderful stretch that he's delivered. Uh, here's the chance. Look at the passing play. Patrick Eliash to Sajak. Back to Patrick. Zelitsky, Eliash, and... Marty Havlet thinks he's got the open net. Watch Reimer stay with this puck and right here in desperation. Kick out the left pad. Oh, what a save right off the toe. Havlet unable to get it up a little bit as he was in tight, but that is a, a terrific save. Off the draw, Clarkson with a shot that's blocked in front, and now Komarov trying to follow up on that. Booth has five of Toronto's 15 shots tonight. Knocked down by a high stick of 2-2 to stop play once again. And Clarkson, we've seen him in this role before from the New Jersey vantage point. Something's got to give here yeah, for Toronto. He gets involved with road two in front of the Leafs net, and Jordan 2-2 grabs a hold of David Clarkson behind the net. This spring, Broadway's biggest spectacular is at Radio City Music Hall. The New York Spring Spectacular starring the Rockettes. March 12th through May 3rd, visit Rockettes.com slash spring probably going to see a little more of this until the Leafs get some goals here there's David Clarkson the former New Jersey Devil 30 goal scorer here in New Jersey and you mentioned he's got 10 this year yapping a little bit with Rue too 
You see Clarkson on the back check, giving Root to a little poke, and both guys going at it. There's Jordan Tutu coming to the aid of his teammate as well. But you're going to see some frustration from the Leafs until they get this goal thing going, offense going. At times you're going to see some poking and prodding, and I expect that. I mean, that's what you have to do as a team to show that you're not liking what's going on. Kadri across, picks up Panic. Return pass for Kadri. That's kicked out again by Corey Schneider. 18th save of the night for Schneider as it's taken here by the Devils. Zidlitsky able to poke it ahead. Out of the reach of Gomez, but now Bernier has it at center ice. Cross ice pass. Marek Zidlitsky into the offensive part of the game here as it's plugged away by Robidoff. Collected by Henrique and played back to John Mera. Behind goal, Robidoff tries to hit Bernier. Puck winds around, picked up here by Harold, who sends it right back in. Here's Gomez, picks up Henrique. His shot fought off by James Reimer in front and collected by Van Riemsdyk. Another fantastic save by Reimer through a screen in front of him as Gomez found Adam Henrique in the high slot to the right. And he gets a lot on that wrist shot. Big save by Reimer. Terrific forecheck by Yager as the puck comes out of the zone, and Winnick works it across. Here's Santarelli on the move. He shoots. It's held by Schneider. Will step aside. Better than halfway through period two. It's a 2-0 Devils lead. Tonight's Geico hometown hero is Corporal Michael Basso from Jackson, New Jersey. Michael joined the Marine Corps in 2008 and served as a motor transportation specialist supporting Operation Enduring Freedom and Iraqi Freedom. Well, congratulations to Michael Basso. And he's wearing a pretty good jersey as well, Steve. Does he have How a can I not respect him wearing a, <laughs> the number three? But uh, thank you so much, more importantly, for what you do and what you've done. I know how that makes much you feel. Much appreciated. I love it. I mean, it, 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 I have a lot of respect and still take nothing for granted. Uh, it's, it's surreal when you see them have your jersey on their back. Here's Yager, wearing 68, motors in. Taken here by Camilleri, guided back to the point where Green is on it. Under pressure from Lupel, Green deals with it well. Lost his edge when crashing to the ice. Reimer reaches out and is able to cover up, and this is becoming a regular occurrence in front of the Leafs net. Yeah, Joffrey Lupel with the punch to the back of the head. I think that, I'm not sure who that was, and... Well, I, I just want to give there, you see Lou Lamorello and, and a, a gentleman that lost his life way too early, Tom Shine, who worked with the Devils organization. A good friend to the Devils, a good friend to us, and Lou Lamorello had so much respect and also a good friend of Tom Shine. And my condolences, uh, heartfelt condolences go out to Tom's family, his, his friends, and uh, certainly I felt like I was one of them. Uh, he, he took care of us, a lot of us young Devils, back in the day in the 80s like Kirk Muller, Joe Sorella, Johnny Mack. We all knew him very well and boy, 54 years old and it was pretty devastating. It was kind of all of a sudden, Steve, and just to love Tom Shine so full of life and he's gone too quickly from us, but uh, it's a sad moment for me, that's for sure. He's a good friend and the rest of the New Jersey Devils family. I'm sure, I'm, I'm glad you put it that way too, Kenny. Uh, good public relations man was Tom as we watch Booth with a shot and that's fought off again by Schneider, and at this stage, Booth might be seeing Corey Schneider in his sleep. He stopped six from Booth alone, but sometimes that job goes way beyond just the traditional coordinating interviews and getting the press notes ready for guys like you and I now. Mm -hmm. uh, very I know you emotional. feel like you've lost part of the family. Yeah, very emotional time. Spent a lot of time with him at the Jersey Shore. Kessel's shot is fired high. During hockey during our hockey career and anytime you needed something and Tom Shine like I said took care of us young guys and the boy it's, uh, it's very emotional for me I, I had a great respect and he was a dear friend and I know a lot of people loved him. 2 nothing Devils here in the second. Rutu one of the goal scorers to Jordan Tutu and worked across to Peter Harold. Seven and a half to go in the middle period. Here's 2-2, motoring into the leaf zone. Gardner there to beat him to the puck. Gets support from Rovada, and now Ponick able to play this ahead. James Van Riemsdyk works his way around Harold. 
Peter Horacek has split up that top line as Van Riemsdyk is on with Kadri and Panik here. Shoveled into the Leafs end by Josephson. Devils use the opportunity to change. Three Devils with only ten shots on goal. Seven minutes left in the second. But I don't think that concerns them right now. We've seen this in this homestand. But a lot of those chances, and they have two goals up to nothing, have been quality chances, haven't they, Steve? Yeah, you'd like a few more shots and chances on that, but it seems their chances have been as quality, if not more, than Toronto Maple Leafs, who have 20 shots on goal, double the Devils. They don't seem too concerned about that. Henrique works it across. Bernier drops it back to the point, and it's taken by Larson. Into the corner. Gomez back for Larson. He shoots, they score! Bernier was the man in front. It was deflected. We'll see by who the Devils extend the lead to 3 0. Just as we talked about the low shot total we've seen from the Devils tonight and the previous four or five games here at the Rock, they're efficient. Their shots are getting through. They're Adam Larson, who continues to stay. Red Hot scores right here from the point on the blast. I don't know if Bernie got a piece of that or not, but it looked like he just squeaked through James Reimer. Bernie may have got a part of it, but when I say Red Hot for Adam Larson, continues to play with confidence. Now he's adding an offensive arsenal to his game, along with great stability on the back end. And Devils take a 3-0 lead. A lot of things going right so far tonight and throughout. There's five games you talked about. They're looking at it in the situation room. There's a delay here on the first two replays. We didn't see any evidence immediately of what they're looking for. Uh, I, I think that did hit Steve Bernier. In fact, he's going to be credited with the goal. He's in the crease, you see there. Let's watch the shot come from the point right there. And that's probably why they went to Toronto as they review every goal as we know Steve if it was a kicking motion or not and I don't believe it was he's just standing and there you have it a good hockey goal so Adam Larson I believe Scott Gomez will get assists and Steve Bernier where is he right in front of the net doing the dirty work his goals not are not always the prettiest but boy are they hard-working goals aren't they paying the price in front of the net his ninth goal of the year, you may or may not have known that he came into this game with the best plus minus of any New Jersey Devils player tied with the injured Steven Gianta who's begun skating. Three goals for New Jersey, none for the Leafs. 6.15 to go here in the second. Taken here by Zubris. Puck yard loose. Green trying to hold the zone and it's played across. Stefan Robodal will bank it ahead. Larson battling with Lupul and the puck taken away by Camilleri who dumps in. The Devils seeking their first three game winning streak since the season's opening week. Games one, two, and three of the season against Philadelphia, Florida, and Tampa. Robada behind the net, tied up by Yager. And the puck taken away here. Zidlitsky able to maneuver away. And Zajac will chop it back in deep. Sometimes, Steve, it's hard to pinpoint when a team finally gets things in the right direction or, or a specific turning point. But you just feel going in every game. Devils didn't start particularly well. But Corey Tyler, their goaltender, has been a rock. And you just feel things are going to go the right way. The Devils get the first goal and haven't looked back since. The Leafs try to throw it to the high slot and Santorelli deflects away and it comes back to Cody Franzen instead. Bernier from Larson and Gomez at 13-31 to extend the Devils lead. Outshot by nearly a 2-1 to one margin but seemingly in control right now as Gardner plays it ahead. Picked off at center ice by Zajac, collected by Peter Harrell. Here's Mark Fraser on the puck. Worked ahead. Pavlak dishes across. That got by Harold. Picked up here by Kadri. Trying to split two defenders and one-handed away by Fraser. Oh. Nazem Kadri behind the net. Van Riemsdyk trying to find the handle. Works it behind goal. Punched away by the Devils and Fraser. Tries to guide it behind the net. Pressure here by the Leafs as Havlak 
Kicks it a loose puck, but couldn't take it out of the zone. And Reamsdyke keeps it alive. Gardner's shot is blocked in front by Harrell. Again, Devils doing a real good job down low and around the net. At least put pressure on, but everything's blocked. Shot by then. Reamsdyke saved again by Schneider. Puck comes loose. Taken here by Gomez. Scott Gomez in. Shoots, and it's blocked away by Reimer. Scotty Gomez comes from the bench. Good recognition from the Devils D getting that puck up, and he has a real good scoring chance off a burst of speed down the left side. Here's Green for New Jersey. Long pass, steered ahead by Bernier and into the Toronto end where Morgan Riley is back to collect this. Three and a half to go in the second period of play. Devils trying to move within 10 points of Boston for the second wild card in the East. The Bruins are idle tonight. Washington has come back to tie Anaheim 1-1. Kessler and Chimera have exchanged goals in that one. Laid back and Larson on the puck for New Jersey. This is what a staff wants. Up by three, you can roll all four lines comfortably as long as everybody plays sensibly. Uh, that's what you want to see, get everybody involved. Devils have been able to do that. Big hit behind the net on Morgan Riley. Multiple hits by Pollock. <laughs> well, that started with a big hit. Taken here, Zidlitsky fakes one shot. Tries to go wide on Holland. Zidlitsky takes it down low. He wipes out behind the net. Has to navigate a broken stick. Rutu is there to help. Yager in the corner as well. Yaramir Yager comes up with the puck. It's a tough puck for Merrill to handle, and he retreats into his own end. He talked about the battles in the leaf end along the wall. Tuomo Rutu. Well, that's what you want from him. He's doing his job because he's really starting to get under the leaf skin. You saw Polak give him a couple extra whacks. And that's part of it. You throw teams off their game, and he made the original big hit on Morgan Riley. Camilleri hit by Holzer. Leafs try to work it out of the zone. Havlat stays strong on the puck. Tries to guide it away from Polak. Martin Havlat continues along the far boards. Nice job to feather it to Zubris, who plays it back to the point. Here's Harold under pressure from Peter Hallen. Knocked down a second time. There's a penalty coming up. That's the first minor for either team tonight. Delayed penalty call, and Corey Schneider will get to the bench. I can't believe that. I was just going to say, we have not seen a power play yet in this ho hockey game, and it's been a pretty feisty game at times. Devils finally get the first one. Peter Harold cross-checked by Holland into the boards. The Devils are up 3-0, but Patrick Eliash was talking Adam Henrik's ear off the entire two-minute break, the TV timeout. And Patrick will chat with us. He's going to skate right off the ice in a minute 22 and be our guest at the intermission. We're going to talk about his 400th goal as the Devils get set for a two-minute power play, guys. And I can't wait to see the Maven put his GM hat on between periods, Deb, with some big injuries in the NHL <laughs> that we'll talk about in the second intermission. But we've got our first power play. It's Danico's kind of game. Kyle Riemann and Tom Kowal, the referees, have really just let him go until that boarding call. And for no penalties in this game until now, the boarding on Holland, it had been a little bit feisty, but they have let the guys play, and I appreciate that. I know the players do. Here's Eliash at the point. He and Adam Larson begin the power play. Zajac is the other point man, taken here down low by New Jersey and Henrique. Dishes off the near board. Zajac can't control. Slowed up Kadri and let up just in time. You see Travis Zajac let the stick go. Hoping he didn't get a hooking call there. And in fact, the refs let it go. Picked up here by Eliash. Devils power play was 0 for 3 in the last game against Ottawa. Leafs penalty kill tied for 8th best in the NHL. Out of the reach of Eliash and out of the zone. Devils unable to get set up in the leaf zone. Henrik tries to go to the point, but nobody was home out of the Devils end or out of the Leafs end. Short-handed, Komarov takes the puck on the errant pass from Camilleri. Leo Komarov winds it around and Bernier will wait. Pretty uneventful first minute to the Devils power play. Now Gomez works it free and we'll see what the Devils can do with 20 seconds left in the period. Here's Larson firing in. Gomez. 
Able to control. Tried to dish it back to the point. Broken up by the Leafs. Collected here by Robada. And with help from Booth, it's sent back towards the Devils' end. Five seconds to go. Camilleri dishes ahead. Taken here by Bernier. Will they get a final shot? No is the answer. But yes in the affirmative on whether or not the Devils are where they want to be. Up three after two periods. Patrick Eliash with Deb and the Maven straight ahead. Get your friends together and head to Prudential Center for a Devils game. Purchasing a girls and guys night out package is the way to do it, which includes your ticket, a hot dog, and either a beer or soda to purchase your girls and guys night out ticket package. Visit NewJerseyDevils.com slash night out or call 1-800-NJ-DEVIL. And as the third period begins, still 38 seconds in carryover penalty time to the boarding call against Peter Holland. Devils lead 3-0. They have nine different players with points, 15 different players who are plus one to this point in the game. That's balance. Yeah, I was taking a look at that, and you mentioned they've been able to roll all four lines, play all 60, and, and you like that. Everybody gets involved. Everybody feels a part of it, and the Devils, with only 12 shots on goal, seem to be playing just such a strong, efficient game all over the ice, Steve. Mike Cavallari on the continuation of the power play, fires in. Devils are offside here as Merrill gathered the puck. Tonight's upcoming schedule is brought to you by Lexus. Our only trip to the Bell Center in Montreal this season is tomorrow night, 7 o'clock on MSG+. And then the Devils back home. Monday night, the Oilers will come in. The Blackhawks await on Friday night in Chicago. Off the draw, that's Henrique, who's tied up by Roman Polak, and it's sent the length of the ice. Time for another rush here. Schneider tries to get the Devils started quickly, but now Larson has to track down the loose puck, and Andy Green collects. Standing up is Peter Holland. Penalty time is up. Not much doing on that power play for the Devils, but again, when I go back to what I mean by efficient, you just feel that they're under control. There's no panic here, and that hasn't been the case before this five-game homestand. They can continue to play as a team and five-man units. Santarelli puts the brakes on on Lawson. Tries to spin away from Gomez. Punches it loose. Quick shot by Panic. Save made by Schneider. Corey Schneider again with the big left pad save and boy when they need him to be there he's been good there hasn't been a ton of quality scoring chances but everything fired Corey Schneider's way he's made look easy that was one of the more difficult saves of the evening for him icing here against the Devils he's made 22 stops to this point here's the replay Santorelli who's had good good legs one of the rare Leafs here nice little twisting and turning his own end and there you see Monick comes in and Corey Schneider didn't get all of it as there was a devil. Look at it again right here. As Bernier deters him a little bit. But Panic gets enough of it. Corey Schneider has to come up big. Kicking out that left pad. Camilleri to take the defensive zone draw and wins it back from Tyler Boza. Shoveled away by Yager. He was hit as he released the puck and it's played back into the Leafs end where Cody Franzen is on it. Leafs team that has won just three of the last 21 that it's played. Eliash there to meet Phil Kessel. Robida plays it ahead. Van Riemsdyk steers it into the Devils end and Schneider gives here to John Merrill. Had the puck taken away. Now Van Riemsdyk guides it around the boards taken here by Kessel. Phil Kessel guides it back. Quick shot from the point by Riley is saved by Schneider again. Worked away by Eliash. Taken here by Patrick. Tries to drop it back for Zajac. Between periods here on the big board, they replayed Death Placey's interview with Patrick Eliash. You should have heard the ovation. A lot of the Pitt fans are not even in their seat, but all throughout the building, they saw it on the monitors, they recognized it. The milestone recognized by fans who cheered him, cheered him now for some 17 years as it's taken here by Gardner. I was going to ask you, it's 17, 18 years now, and 17, in fact, it is. <laughs> Give or take a year at the time, I was thinking that Patrick Eliash, the fans have been able to watch him for years. 
and do some great things and scores 400 tonight, which is an exciting time for Patrick and everybody. Gardner now at the point. That's deflected off the stick of Havlat. Picked up here by Fraser. He's checked off the puck. Here's Gardner looking for space. Devils converge on him. Havlat taken away. Ponick trying to control. And now Zajac collects again for the Devils. Picked up here by the Leafs. Franzen, though, is tied up, and it's lifted out of the zone by Zajac. So we're seeing 23 shots for the Leafs, but are the Devils doing just as good of a job on keeping it to the outside, like that shot by Booth? They really are there. And not... Reemsdyke turns and shoots. Excuse me, Kenny. I set you up in a bad spot, no, and it's no, taken no, here no, by no, Gomer. And you saw there the Devils again blocking a shot in front of Schneider, but really keeping everything outside. Schneider had to make his best save earlier on Panic. But that's about it. Everything coming from from the side and making it easier for the goaltender. Controlled by the Leafs and Holland on the puck here. Another active night for Tuomo Rutu and he belts Peter Holland to the ice as it's controlled by Franzen. And that's what Rutu does, doesn't he? Finish every check and play as an agitator against the opposition. Coming off Pretty active game the other night against Ottawa as 2-2 collides against Stefan Robodon. Played back into the Leafs end where Holzer works it free. Opening four and a half minutes of the third period. Devils with a 3-0 lead. Josephson collects, sends it in. Rutu is on the loose puck here. He's in all alone and he's ridden off the play by Corbinian Holzer. John Merrill back in his own end for New Jersey. Able to shake away from Lupul and work it ahead. Off the bench, Zubris alertly to Yager, who carries in for New Jersey. Camilleri deflected off his skate. Following up here, Zidlitsky leaves for Yager in the corner. Knocked off his stick, and now Camilleri able to control. Camilleri works it down low. Here's Zubris behind the net. Gives to Camilleri. Played back. Zidlitsky at the point. Waits for traffic to unfold, and now Zubris has it. Fanned on his first chance, collected by Yager. Centering try by Camilleri. Yager trying to find the handle in front, but it's punched away. Camilleri again as the Devils hold the offensive zone. Gives to Yager. Worked across. Loose puck. Camilleri one hand one towards Reimer, who made the stop. He's not back into the net, but we continue on. Now the 13th shot on goal for the Devils is another quality one. And I will bet out of those 13 shots, a good eight of them, Steve, have been high-grade scoring chances. And that's what the Devils look to do, not worried about what you talked about, accumulating shots as much as we've seen in the past, maybe. This is dumped in. Elias tried to win the race to the dot, but it's icing. Right, here's the replay. Mike Camilleri, Yermer Yager rifles that puck across, and it's able to get to Camilleri off Lupul. He pokes at that puck, and again there, you see Camilleri, goal scorers have a nose for the net. Puck seems to find him somewhere. He darts there and chips at a puck backhanded to Reimer. Had to make the save. He stopped 13 at his end. Off the draw. It's taken here by Kessel. Shot from the point by Franzen. Blocked away in front. And Zajac on the puck here and content to shovel it out to center. At last check, Anaheim and Washington. 1-1 third period. Columbus with a 5-1 lead at home against St. Louis. Gloved away by Schneider. Fraser, tough puck to handle. Van Riemsdyk all over him. But it gets by Gardner, and the Leafs have to retreat again. Johnny Mack had talked about in the second period hit. The Leafs, some of them disinterested. Haven't noticed Phil Kessel most of the night, but I just noticed through the neutral zone, he's frustrated the Devils doing a great job again, giving him no time and space to skate. Gomez darts into the Leaf zone. Motors around. Ponick got a shot away, and Reimer had to make the save. Taken in the corner. The Leafs, other most visible player, if you will, Dion Phaneuf, remains out, missing a fifth straight game due to a hand injury. Speculation he'll return for the Leafs tomorrow night when they take on the Edmonton Oilers at the Air Canada Center. Booth drops this back. Kadri's shot is blocked away again, and the Devils have done splendidly filling the lane. Gomez across. Larson down low. The redirect by Bernier just missed. Well, Adam Larson, a little unselfish there, had an opportunity to shoot that puck, and you saw him kind of with a little 
smirks in. I probably should have shot that. The passing lane wasn't open to Bernier. Comes back to the point where Polak plays it in. Collected instead by Tuomo Rutu. Seven and a half played in period number three. Jordan Tutu lifts it ahead. And it's taken here by the Leafs. Rutu, Clarkson, tied up against each other. And a couple of Leafs want a piece of Tuomo Rutu. Not taking the bait yet. <laughs> Mike Camilleri tied for the NHL lead with seven game-winning goals this season. Who led the NHL in that department last season? I'm going to go with Minnesota's Zach Parise. How about you? Ah, good one. I, I'm going to go with Anaheim's Corey Perry. Although I might be missing a year here. Might have been the previous season. Wow, match back to Reddy. Mr. Clutch doing it again this year for the Montreal Canadiens. Connecticut native. And what a year he's had. We'll see him tomorrow night. And I guess that's not a surprise. He's a guy that scores big goals. It's four on four as this is lifted towards goal. Reimer tried to bat it with the glove, and he does into the corner. It's taken here by Zidlitsky. The coincidental minors, Clarkson and Rutu. Clarkson for unsportsmanlike conduct. Rutu got a roughing penalty. And are more players going off here? It looks like it might just be Travis Sajak to the box, giving the Leafs the power play after the coincidental minors you talked about. Let's see right here. Ah, uh, Travis Sajak, an interference call on the goaltender, James Reimer, I believe. Or I assume, and looked like he was tangled up with the defenseman, Jake Gartner. So he wasn't real happy about it. Let's see what the call is. When the Devils play with three skaters, they like to have Zajac on the ice. This complicates it a little bit. Four on three. It's Eliash, the lone forward, with Green and Larson. Yeah, goalie interference was the call. And I think Travis Zajac has, has a point there. Taken by the Leafs, Tyler Bozak and Franzen play catch at the point. Cody Franzen gives here and gets it back to Phil Kessel at the circle. His office, wrist shot, blocked away. And Reamsdijk checked by Larson, now Green. Under pressure from Phil Kessel as the puck's jarred loose. Kessel knocked down on the play by Green, who shovels the puck loose. Elias trying to find the handle. Able to take, works it off the backboard. Green, can he clear it away? He does. Wow, well, real good work by Patrick Elias, Adam Larson, and Andy Green, the big three on this kill. And the Leafs again, just not enough hunger to get that loose puck. Here's Kessel, and the Leafs set up with Kessel on the half board. Four on three power play. 57 seconds left in that. Taken here by Franzen, worked across. Kessel plays it down low. They get it back to the point. Franzen shoots, deflected off the netting, and out of play. The game recap brought to you by Tri Honda Dealers. The big story, the Eliash milestone. It's been reached. He waited a month, but career goal number 400. Tuomo Rutsu got the scoring started. Steve Bernier, six goals in his last eight. Uh, you see everybody contributing tonight. Rutsu, good to see him get a goal. We know he's been out of the lineup, but first goal since November 22nd, as we saw there. And Steve Bernier just continues to produce and get those grinding, mucking kind of goals in front of the net. Henrique on the continuation of the penalty kill. Green and Larson will stay on. We've seen them as two-minute PK guys in these situations. The Leafs shot. Bozak, Kessel, and Van Riemsdyk reunited for it. And Green off the faceoff will send it the length of the ice again. Speaking as any player, but being a defenseman throughout my career, watching Adam Larson, you know when you're in the zone, just like a goaltender. He's like a kid in a candy store out there. He's just on his toes, reacting to everything. Franzen shot, save made by Schneider. The rebound cleared away. Big save, Corey Schneider there. Andy Green right on the doorstep to clear the rebound away. But back to Larson, Steve, meaning... You know, he's getting sticks in the lane. He's blocking shots. He's starting to get some offense involved, and he's having some fun. Here's Kessel walking in, fired it wide, and off the backboard it deflects out. Well, that's the way it's gone for the Toronto Maple Leafs the last 10 games. Phil Kessel has all kinds of time in the high slot, and he shoots the puck wide off the end boards, and it clears 
all the way out of the devil's zone. I thought the lively board felt like we were in Detroit for a few moments. Banked away, not out of the zone, taken here. Clarkson out of the box trying to control. Penalty time is up. Successful kill by New Jersey as it's taken here by Gardner. Here's Kadri. Works it across. That try by Clarkson is fired wide of the net. Peter Harold will track this down for the Devils and slow the pace as he plays it across here to Fraser. Camilleri able to pick up Yager. Bumped by Kadri. And Riley will shovel this ahead. David Clarkson's way. Worked across. Here's Kadri over the line. Tries to make his move around. Zidlitsky in that shot. Might have gone off the edge of the post. There's another penalty coming up. It's a hook. That did hit the post. And we'll be back here, Steve. Devil's going to the penalty box. Coming up, Foxwoods Final Five. Foxwoods, excitement every day. Well, Merrick Zidlitsky in the box for a hook. Here's a save on the power play off Cody Fronson. And then look at the slick hands here from Nazem Kadre. And then he dings one off the far post. And Devil's very fortunate there. What a move Kadre makes. He's got great hands. And that's the way it's gone for the Leafs. Devils dodge a bullet. Kadre with the move and dings one off the far post. But Leafs on the power play. And Gardner at the point will shovel this across as Kadri collects. The Kessel line sitting out the first wave of this for Toronto. Coming out of the stoppage in play as it's taken here by Santarelli. Mike Santarelli at the circle. Holds, drops it back. Gardner's shot saved by Schneider and swept away by Green. Picked up shorthanded. Josephson tries to one-hand it out of the zone. It deflects out of play. Lee's firing everything toward the net that time Jake Gartner and it just doesn't want to find a way to the back net and this is this is mounting for the Toronto Leafs Maple Leafs you see David Clarkson Lopel in front that one hit Clarkson's in Clarkson in the hand but they're just getting no fortunate bounces that whether it's sitting on the doorstep or getting by Schneider and it has been a tough stretch for these Toronto Maple Leafs 123 to go. The hooking penalty against Marek Zidlitsky as the Leafs fire in. Andy Green on the puck behind the net. It's work free in front. Trying to turn around and shoot. Clarkson loose at the side of the net and Kadri put it right through the crease. Taken here at the point by Santarelli. Joffrey Lupel down low. Santarelli has it. Guides it across and now Gardner as the Leafs set up again. Minute to go on this Toronto power play. Here's Kadri holding Zubris there to contend with him. Andy Green took it away from Lupo and clears it away. A nifty little play by Andy Green. Great position. Able to pick off a pass and get that puck down the ice. But the Leafs again, Steve, I mean, all around the net. And they are as snake bitten a team as I've seen in a long time. Kessel motoring into the zone. Goes wide. He shoots. And it's... It's in the net. Not sure if it was initially in on the shot by Kessel or not, but the Leafs are on the board with 8.09 to go. Just as I talk about snake bit, the Leafs come right back on the power play, and I think Phil, Phil Kessel's original shot was in the net, and he wired this one. Let's watch Kessel right here coming down the wing. He goes upstairs. No, in fact, it wasn't. Crossbar post. And the Devils, I think, stopped playing. And that does not look like it was originally in. No, it wasn't. Devils all of a sudden stopped. And there you see the trailer. I believe that's Robina from the defense. From the back end comes in and cleans this puck up. Yeah, in fact, Phil Kessel, he continues to have some hard luck. I'm not sure who scored that goal. It was tough to see what number. It might have been Bozak who was, was on two heading for the net down. We'll get another look. We still haven't seen it clearly, but we see Robodon back here. I think you're right, Steve. I, it was tough to see the number. Kessel again. Offside of the Leafs this time. Let's take a look one more time at this goal. And, and again, I go back to the Devils. I think they stopped playing, assuming Kessel had put this puck in. What a shot from a sharp angle, goes crossbar, right post and out and sits in the crease there. John Merrill, you think, would he be able to knock that puck to the corner? But I think he believed this was in the net. 
right there you see he kind of stopped and in fact good angle there it is Tyler Bozak with a wide open net puts in the rebound off the crossbar post 15th the of the season for Bozak sorry Steve the Devils uh, I mean again I, I think they didn't play to the whistle there and just kind of let up a little bit but again the Leafs had some opportunities and you think they they were probably due to bury one Schneider gloves this with Clarkson at the doorstep converging on Mark Fraser and a face off deep in the zone so still some work for the Devils to do before getting their reward here tonight as we watch Kessel again first time we've seen Phil Kessel use a little speed in that shot he has had nothing going on in this game and that was a rifle off the crossbar post and Bozak cleans it up now Gardner firing and that's controlled by Schneider he opts to play the puck didn't hold on too long say the officials and it's played back here for Franzen 3-1 is the score under seven and a half left they're guilty of icing the puck Phil Kessel sat at his locker here nine nights ago Kenny after that shootout loss he said he couldn't remember being in a worse slump in his entire career look at that one even strength goal since December 16th that stretch continues it's a lot of talk about moving him before the March 2nd deadline nobody questions his talent and one would think that moving forward the Leafs are going to continue to build around Phil Kessel. Would you agree? Well, I would think so. I mean, unless they get the right offer and somebody really is interested as a big deal, long-term contract. But one of the premier goal scorers in the game, I, I just feel, and I think I said it last week when the Leafs were in town, he's more suited in a different kind of role and not all the pressure on Phil Kessel to be your guy. Backhand try by Henrik, saved by Reimer. The Devils nearly answer right back as Adam Henrique is hitting the Leafs crease. Adam Henrique with a great scoring chance and his former teammate David Clarkson roughing him up while he's down on the ice. Look at Scotty Gomez again, the great vision, good position, body position from Henrique on Clarkson as he gets that pass in the backhand on his forehand that gets a real good backhanded shot off. David Clarkson not happy that he got such a good scoring opportunity. Watch, it gives him a little extra curricular activity at the or in the goal crease they played a lot together not long ago in this building Camilleri now steps on to take the draw Clarkson seems like he wants to make an emotional difference here in the third period the Devils I think have been careful to keep their distance just enough as it's picked up here and one back by Zubris shot by Larson is deflected away Cleared away. This should be icing again against the Leafs as Larson goes back hard. And the faceoff back in the Toronto zone. 6.44 to go in this homestand, barring a Leafs comeback to tie the game. Well, still some time in this hockey game. 6.44 left in the third period. Devils up by two, three to one. But the Leafs just scored a goal. They've had some chances. Devils cannot take their foot off the pedal they got to play right till the end because the Leafs maybe just with one goal are starting to feel we're due to break out of it and score a flurry of goals in a short period of time Polak fires in Zidlitsky back to collect this Daniel Winnick trying to get on the loose puck for Toronto tied up by Zidlitsky works the puck free but quickly on it Morgan Riley for Toronto Leafs desperately trying to get within one here Riley sent it towards goal that deflected away wide Jeffrey Lupel has it in the corner for the Leafs. Drops it back to the point. Now Riley across. That try by Polak goes wide. Riley at the opposite point punches it right back in, and it's collected here by Santarelli. Tries to pick up Polak. Stripped of the puck, taken away, and punched ahead to Yager, who dumps in. Well, Leafs ever so close to capitalizing again. Moving the puck pretty well. The Devils were able to get one errant pass and get it out of the zone Devils team that's already in a stretch where they've earned points in five consecutive games that's a season high trying to stretch it here to six and close more ground on the top eight in the Eastern Conference picked up here by the Leafs and here's Bozak on the far side works it ahead 
Kessel trying to control, dropped it back to Gardner. His shot is held by Schneider, who holds on. 30th shot of the game for the Leafs. Devils have the lead. Tonight's goal of the game is brought to you by Nissan. Choose Nissan today for great offers on our most exciting lineup ever. Shop at ChooseNissan.com. And our Nissan goal of the game is this man, Patrick Eliash, with the beautiful wrist shot set up from Travis Sajak for his 400th career goal of his 400th go goal of his career, Steve. And it's an, been an illustrious career here in New Jersey for Patrick Eliash. 5.20 to go before he and the Devils can celebrate off the draw. Connick got a shot away and he fired it just wide. Rutu tries to one-hand it out of the zone. Now Andy Green under pressure. David Booth sealed off by Josephson. Puck yard loose. It comes back to Franzen who works it across. Here's Gardner shot. A wrister controlled by Schneider. And there's more rough stuff after the whistle here. Puck was loose. Let's go downstairs. Deb Placey, what do you have? We are less than five minutes away, if this one ends in regulation, from the JAG physical therapy postgame. We'll have interviews from the locker room. We'll have the number one star of the game on the ice. We've got Lou Lamarillo's press conference, Ken Danico, Steve Cangelosi. You guys will be with John McClain for highlights. It's all coming up. We're looking forward to it. Could be a special edition of the JAG physical therapy postgame. Looking forward to that, Deb. Looking forward to being a part of it. Washington has taken a 2-1 lead over Anaheim. Jason Chimera has both goals for the Caps. Lupel off the draw, shoots, blocked away in front by Green, and ladled out of the zone. Taken here by Gardner. Bernier met the Leafs at center ice, and now Franzen back in his own end. Devils tonight, board a plane to Montreal. Get the Canadians tomorrow, who will have two full days of practice and rest in preparation for that. Picked up here by Gomez. Henrique tries to guide it into the zone and does as Reimer has it behind his net. Motoring out of his own end, Morgan Riley works it ahead. Connick centering try. Zajac waiting in the slot, defended it well and gives here to Eliash. Well, still time here for the Devils to seal the deal, but I'm looking forward, looking ahead tomorrow night. Montreal Canadiens, one of the speedier teams, Steve, to see if, in fact, this kind of new defensive structure the Devils seem to have implemented will shut down the high-flying Canadians. And you're watching the Foxwoods Final Five. Foxwoods excitement every day. Visit foxwoods.com. Carey Price is making a run at the Vezina, and some people say the Hart Trophy. He's been that good for the Canadians. Robodov back in his own end. Four minutes to go here at the Rock. Devils trying to complete a homestand. 4-0-1. Lifted across and taken here by Morgan Riley. Robodov to center. Plays it ahead. Van Riemsdyk on the receiving end of that pass. Walks in. Van Riemsdyk shoots. Stop made by Schneider. Hauled down in front was Ajak. Quickly back to his skates, but Van Riemsdyk is on the puck. Now Bozak delivers a hit. Tyler Bozak able to control. Sends it back in, and here's Van Riemsdyk on the puck again. The big Middletown, New Jersey native trying to come in front. He does. It's loose in the crease, and Larson got rid of it in time. Kessel plays it across. Robida shot blocked away in front. Here's Riley now. Pressure by the Leafs as it's guided back towards the point. But fortunate for the Devils, it comes out of the zone. Wow. All pressure from the Leafs, and what a play by... Jane Van Riemsdyk in the corner coming out and getting a great scoring chance going to the net. One of the things the Devils have done, some of the changes that they've made, they're chasing the puck less, and that's resulted maybe in more energy for them. Reimer left. Yager, the net empty. Scores! James Reimer never fully got off and the empty net goal by Yager. With 2.45 to go, restores the three-goal lead. Wow, the Leafs were putting on all kinds of pressure in the Devils' zone. Some great stick work and maneuver from Ben Riemsdyk originally, but he's unable to score. Leafs turn it over at the Devils' blue line, and in fact, James Reimer was just coming off for the extra attacker, and he goes, whoops, puts on the brakes, goes, I got to get back. 
when he just had no time as Yarmar Murray Agger's got nothing but an empty net with Reimer helpless trying to get back and block the shot. And that one pretty well seals the deal. 4-1 Devils, 240 left in the hockey game. Yaramir Yager won behind the great Phil Esposito on the all-time goal scoring list. Picked up here by Santarelli. Now Zedlitsky back in his own end. It's collected here by Adam Henry. Santarelli. Dropped back to the point. Here's Holzer. Plays it across. Swept off a leaf stick and played back towards Polak. Santarelli again. He's had a strong game for the Leafs again. His team, though, down three. Got past Holzer. Nothing to show for it, but he's probably had the best legs for the Leafs all evening long. And, you know, his great skating ability. And going back to the empty net goal by Aramar Jagger, you, you talked about it, Steve. Andy Green makes a huge block, point blank. Game could have been 3-2 right there. Those are the little things that won't show up on the score sheet because he didn't get an assist, I don't believe. But that is such a big play, and it kind of seals the deal, ends the hockey game 3-2 or 4-1. Well, you'll be happy to know that a defenseman did get an assist, the second of the game for Adam Larson at 17-15. Centering try for Cavallari, and Reimer made the stop there. Here's Ponick back the other way. Devils on the verge of completing a wildly successful homestand as 2-2 is chased back into his own end. Here's Jordan 2-2, motoring into the Leafs' end. Let's Holzer know he's there. Punched ahead by the Leafs, and Booth is sealed off here by Adam Larson. Jordan 2-2 turned on the Jets there, Steve. I was watching him carry that puck. And... Kadri dropped it back. Devils there waiting to break it up. Clarkson now tried to center one, taken by Toronto anyway. Holzer works it across, and now here's Adam Larson on the puck with 40 seconds to go at Prudential Center. Icing is waved off. As this game winds down, you saw the fourth line you talked about. Devils able to roll every line, keep everybody involved. Jordan Tutu with a nice burst through the neutral zone. He continues to play well for the team. Komarov over the line, drops it back. Here's Holland with a shot. Schneider with another save. Well, there's still a long climb to go. After tonight for the Devils, just 30 games remaining in the regular season. There are several teams to pass. Difficult, yes, but maybe, just maybe, here they come. They win it tonight over Toronto 4-1. This is the kind of streak they've been looking for all season long, and even though the odds are stacked against them, they finally be able to, been able to put together a bunch of wins at home, have some home ice advantage, and haven't always done it in perfect fashion or style, but you just have a different feeling about this team right now. Points 50 and 51 have been earned. New Jersey's 21st victory this season. They've won three in a row. That barricade that has been in front of them since the opening week of the season. They sweep the season series from the Maple Leafs. A 33-save performance by Corey Schneider, who's been nothing but remarkable now for some time. We'll get the signal for the three stars of tonight's game before we set the stage for the post-game show. If I'm not mistaken, I wanted to say, especially for his parents, it's Adam Henry's birthday today celebrating, right? His 26th? Of tonight's I hope I'm right, Steve. I believe I am. Okay. Tonight's third star. I am right. His parents the are proud Devils, of that. Number 21, Scott Gomez. Scott Gomez is your third star. Tonight's second star from the Devils, number 35, Corey Schneider. He's getting to be a regular at that twirl. And tonight's first star from the Devils, with his 400th career goal, number 26, Patrick Elias. The most prolific offensive player in Devils history is downstairs with Deb. Thank you so much. Congratulations on goal number 400. You said that 
kind of was finally a month in between goals. Did you find yourself thinking about it? Well, not really. It's just uh, it's stuff going, you know. I, and I, I heard Johnny Mac talking about it on TV. I hadn't had that many opportunities to get my shots off, and obviously today uh, all it took it was that one shot and a great play by Travis. So, what's the next milestone for you now? I don't know. I just enjoy the games. <laughs> I want to keep playing as long as I can, having fun. Hopefully, the, guy, the our fans can enjoy the way we play right now and get in the wins and uh, uh, and just pick up the points here. It certainly seems like the fans are enjoying it. What are you guys enjoying about this run? Well, I think that we, honestly, as I said, I don't think we've been playing uh, our best hockey yet. Uh, you know, we're, as I said, uh, you know, our first start today to, uh, was again uh, Schneitz. You know, it wasn't me, but uh, I'll, I'll take it. Obviously, after the 400 uh, goal, but uh, uh, the goal is played incredible for us uh, since the break, and uh, they're giving us an opportunity to win uh, every night. And, we're just finding a way, so hopefully we can play better and uh, just feel good about our game. Okay, next stop, 401. Thank you, Pat. I almost had it there, but uh, uh, I was trying to pass again, so I got to get started in some shots. But uh, thank guys, uh, th again, thank you for your support, guys. Thank you very much. From Trebic, Czechoslovakia, now the Czech Republic. A milestone for Eliash. Devils Canadians tomorrow night, 7 o'clock on MSG+. Plus. The postgame presented by JAG Physical Therapy. Coming up live from Prudential Center in a moment.